Hello, and welcome back to Cozy Ramblings with me, Dana, your resident cozy mystic and art witch. I'll talk a little bit about my artistic process today and a little bit about some nerd stuff, but either way, the vibes are chill, so feel free to set this video to play in the background while you try to go to sleep if that's what you need. Today, I'm going to be walking you through the sped up creation of a new digital art piece in Clip Studio Paint, which was inspired by the recent Marvel film by James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So we're going to start off with some basic color blocking on one layer, and then come back in on an additional layer and add some detail in the form of tiny little threads of fur. You can see me bouncing back and forth to my sketch, which has been made transparent on the top layer, so I can get a better feel for the line work where I know there might be highlights and shadow. Right now, I'm calling this piece Beautiful and Forever, based on a quote from the movie, and I'm kind of considering doing a whole series of critters in the stars, or raccoons in space, or some variation on that theme. It was originally intended to just be a sparkle sticker, but the detail I've decided is too good to keep shrunk down to four inches. So I'll definitely be considering prints and postcards and maybe other products too. So, side note, I don't generally like to shill for monopolies like Disney, but I do wanna say that if you haven't seen volume three, you really should. I'm not going to spoil anything here, but what I'll tell you is that I only had middling feelings about Volume 1, really kind of enjoyed Volume 2, and have now rewatched the entire trilogy multiple times since seeing Volume 3, all with a new level of appreciation. At some point in the creation of this trilogy, maybe even before he ever touched pen to paper, you can tell that James Gunn said, I love this frickin' raccoon, and then turns that love into a whole galaxy that takes each viewer by the hand and tells us, hey, no matter how ugly and painful and lonely your past is, you deserve to open yourself to the possibility of joy and connection. To be honest, I need that energy for more of my storytellers. Shifting gears to talk a bit more about the art. Don't worry, I'll definitely be back in my feelings on the movie soon. The fur here was actually really fun to create, very satisfying, and I was honestly amazed by how good it ended up looking. I used the crayon tool to give it a bit of a coarse texture, and because it pulls some of the pigment from the other crayon lines, it crosses over. But even I didn't expect how well, soft and fur-like it would end up looking. I'm flashing back and forth to my sketch a few times during all of this to also see, like I mentioned before, where highlights and shadows will fall most naturally. Because as you can see, our little raccoon friend here is being visited by the stars. So parts of this white fur are going to glow a little bit more, and parts of the dark fur, like under the eye, are going to reflect some more light. As an artist, light is weird. Your classically trained artist might talk to you about object source lighting and perspective and ambient lighting. And I have like some functional knowledge of that, but mostly I'm like, where does it feel right, you know? You'll probably see this even more when we add the glow later, because you know your girl can't barely make a single piece of art without some glow. But yeah, where does it feel like we should be seeing illumination and reflection? I wish I had a formula for you uh, to figure out where your light and shadow should go, but alas, I do not.
here was probably the most stressful part of this piece, to be honest. I was trying to figure out a couple of things. The first was how the fur lies in a cupped shell of a little animal ear. You have some transparency because a lot of the ear is skin and cartilage and will eventually create that with a little glow effect. But there is still fur there. It gets short and dispersed and maybe almost kind of woolly textured. But my question was like, which way does this fur go? It's kind of hard to tell from reference photos of actual raccoons. I actually ended up straight up using a screenshot of Rocket himself from the Guardians of the Galaxy to figure out how those artists laid down the fur in his ears. Sometimes the reference shots you get from fellow artists and creators are just as important as any so-called real reference photos. Because at the end of the day, what we do as illustration artists is very rarely about making a perfect recreation of reality or capturing an exact moment. It's about reflecting the suggestion of a physical or emotional feeling, an implication of texture, a suggestion of shape and of life. I actually originally learned this lesson myself in like ninth grade when I was trying to draw a portrait of my grandmother and realized that drawing each tooth the way you could see it in the photo made it look like her teeth were rotten in the illustration. <laughs> Later on, trying to figure out what I should have done differently, I realized that other illustrators and animators never draw each tooth. Like, you might see them in real life, but you don't notice them in real life. You notice the bright flash of a smile and the way it makes you feel. So, all of this to say that I am no closer to learning how raccoon fur actually lays in its inner ear, but this certainly seems to be how it feels right. And I'm wondering what percentage of what we do as creators is about what feels right because I think I'm uncovering a trend here at least for myself. Anyway the other struggle I had with this poor ear was figuring out the transition of dark to light fur um, and combining that with the shape of the head, the shadows, the reflection of light. Um, once again it ended up being a combination of using reference photos and reference screenshots but also, you guessed it, what felt right. of the MCU's rocket or James Gunn's rocket specifically. If anything, it's kind of a what might have been. Just a little raccoon charmed and maybe entranced by the infinite stars and the vastness of sky and how close it all seems sometimes. additional glow layer to give that eye some extra inner illumination and depth. Again, I'm not a classically trained artist, nor am I a physicist or an optometrist, but it seems to be something about the structure of the eye that lends itself to inner luminescence, kind of like the Labradorite I mentioned in the last video. You get your surface reflections from the wetness of the eye, yes, but you just know there's also light bouncing off the inside, reflecting on cones and rods and who knows what. And eyes that are alive just seem to glow. But I didn't do that here. I don't know why. You'll see, I think, that I end up making up for it, but not in this moment. So this is something that I would probably do differently in my next illustration.
another new layer, I used the selection tool to mark out my stars and add some color and blend. I wanted them to look almost candy-like, I guess, very whimsical and with an air of innocence, I suppose. So hence the gold and the aqua blue, that pinkish purple that isn't quite a magenta, and the rosier pink as well. To me, those are candy colors, you know. Maybe just because I was a kid in the 90s. <laughs> I did have to come back and smooth some of the lines out, but that part was really easy. While we do that, I'm going to just bounce back to talking about the movie a little more. I was a literature major in undergrad with a particular passion for narrative structure and character development. And from that lens, the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy really holds up. pretty rigid idea of what I think makes a successful three volume story and that includes in part each edition being at least equal to or better than the last. And that's really hard to pull off, right? Because once an audience loves your first story, they go into the second story with higher expectations. So it just gets harder and harder to satisfy. But I don't think there's a single irrelevant or throwaway line or plot point from Guardians 1 or 2 that doesn't lead to a payout in 3. And that's just a massive storytelling accomplishment. Each volume, to me, is legitimately better and more satisfying than the last. There are tons of fun classic trilogies out there that a lot of people love. But to have an arc that's constantly raising the bar and ends with this kind of swan song, I think it's pretty tragically uncommon in our stories and our media. All of this is to say that my inner lit major desperately wants to write a thesis about this series. I'm also, as my sisters will tell you, a total sap. So, in addition to loving the technical elements of the story arc and the character development, I just loved the emotional elements. The movie was so evocative. I was tearing up thinking about it for literally days. It just treats each and every character so thoughtfully and kindly, especially its main character. If creators and storytellers are, in their own ways, the gods of the universes they make, and James Gunn is truly a benevolent one. I think the last time I've seen source material honored and treated so lovingly was the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and even that was more about recreating a world rather than just creating one. Gunn's treatment of the characters feels so personal, so compassionate, and like he honestly just wants good and beautiful and healing things for them. I know, I know. I say I don't want to shill for Disney, but here I am rambling on about how much I love this movie, and now unexpectedly the entire series. But I think that's because as a nerd and a comics fan, I've been pretty disappointed with a lot of MCU's recent fare. I've often felt in recent movies that the CGI left something to be desired, that the storytelling was clunky and either emotionally stunted or rushed. 
and that the MCU has begun leaning on the formulaic approach that it's famous for more often and more transparently than not. My hope as a nerd, as a pop culture fanatic, is that Disney and the MCU, and honestly other entertainment and storytelling franchises as well, will take a lesson from all this. You want creators, writers, directors who love the source material and who discover something of themselves in it. That's the only way you're going to get this quality of narrative and art and this kind of unique, scrappy, heartfelt approach to your genre films. Okay, back to my art. I tried a million backgrounds for this one, and to be honest, I still have them all on file and haven't completely committed to any of them. You can see me trying some big, swirly, transparent, smoky brushes, which I think kind of look like nebula and space dust, and some tiny stars and some bokeh. My interim placeholder has ended up being some Karari brush effects and additional glow. Now, I think I mentioned this before, but I had made the mistake of thinking the star placement was good in my original paper sketch. I thought it looked pretty natural and we have this moment of overlap between star and eye. I know I've talked about this a million times before, but one of the things I love most about digital art is the ability to just fix your mistakes. So we're going to move the star because it has proven to be more of a hindrance than a help in terms of this composition. Thank goodness for separate layers. The glow effect is a little harder to fix because a good glow is in part a reflection off the things in your light source's immediate surroundings. So when we move the star, we can't just move the glow because the terrain it's reflecting off, this part of the eye and the fur, has also changed. So I ended up using a soft kneaded eraser to lift some of the excess light and then relayered the new glow in. Also had to add a little shadow at the base of the eye, which had previously been covered by the star and flattened by some of this excess light. The end result is not bad in my opinion. I went back to the eye and whisker layer for this and then made a separate glow layer because those coarse whiskers are also going to reflect a little bit of light. I did start out making that reflection a little too broad and wide, so then I came back in with a lighter touch. Again, thank goodness for being able to edit mistakes. Finally, I wanted to add a couple more stars to give this constellation a bit of a more wrap-around drifting effect. So I just copied a couple favorites from over here and added some more light around the back side of the head. Since this was originally intended to be a sticker, I've added two differently shaped frames. So when I do print this, you'll be able to get it as either a four inch oval or a four inch soft diamond like shape. I might go bigger than four inches because again, the detail's just too good. We'll have to see. much all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you were trying to get some sleep, I hope you got it. If you were looking for some peace, I hope you found it. And if you were watching for art tips, I hope I gave you something useful. Stay cozy, my friends. And if nothing else today, take this lesson from our little raccoon. That no matter how ugly or painful or lonely your past might be, you deserve to open yourself up to the possibility of joy and connection.